only uh, seven minutes late. Well, I'm sorry, folks, uh, but it's um, this technology and especially Google Hangouts is tough to deal with sometimes. Anyway, um, lots of things going on in uh, the world of best places. And uh, over here, I'm in Oregon right now. It's hot and um, probably going to be about 90 degrees today. Uh, I don't know where you are today, but uh, I know global warming is definitely real. Uh, I I'm not sure exactly what's causing it, whether it's a shift in the Earth's climate or whether it's man-made, exactly what's going on. But I think the Evidence is pretty indisputable that uh, something is going on that's not normal. And uh, so it's going to make a lot of changes all the way around. And how this relates to best places <coughs> is um, I think it's going to be pretty interesting uh, how things are going to happen. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe here in the Northwest, it's going to become more like California. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in places like Phoenix, uh, Dallas places that are normally hot and um, if they're going to get a lot hotter and drier uh, it's going to be some very challenging times here in the next 10 20 50 years so um, anyway I'd love to hear where you happen to live uh, what sort of things are going on where you are and what changes you've seen well here at Sperling's best places we've had some big changes we've moved on to a new platform uh, a new um, place that we can um, have our website uh, that's doing really well. Uh, we've moved sort of in the cloud in a way. We used to run our own servers and everything. That didn't make a lot of sense after a while. So now we are uh, have our own uh, sort of miniature cloud up there and everything. And uh, by the way, the cloud that everybody talks about, it's really just somebody else's computers. Uh, I don't know if there really is such a, a thing as a, a, a big, vague, distributed, giant group of computers up there. But mostly, there's somebody else's computers, and your stuff is on there. So with all the problems that go with that and all the benefits. So that's where Sperling's Best Places lives now. Uh, that's our bestplaces.net website. Uh, it's doing really well. Thank you for sharing and using it. Uh, and learning about this webcast, and I um, uh, hope I can answer some of your questions. Um, one thing that we're going to be adding to our site, bestplaces.net, is some mapping. Uh, there are going to be live maps that are going in. We are uh, working on those. It's going to be really, really powerful and insightful for you to use. Uh, so you're going to get a lot more information and be able to scan through the data much more quickly and find trends and um, hotspots that uh, maybe are especially inexpensive or have a lower cost of living, that sort of thing. You'll be able to pick those out more easily. It's going to be very powerful. So that'll probably happen in the next week or two weeks. So check in and, and see what you think of that. Um, you know, one thing that's really important that we found uh, with uh, uh, places to live is affordability. And I think that so much of quality of life these days is driven by economics. Now, I would like to think a lot of it is based on um, what the climate's like, uh, maybe the social amenities, uh, that sort of thing. But if you can't afford it, it's really tough to find some of the new places that are out there that might be just the right place for you. And along those lines, uh, what we're seeing is, uh, for instance, here on the West Coast, basically anything um, anything over on the, um, uh, sort of on the, on the West Coast is a lot less affordable. Uh, demographers and that sort of thing, they talk about the coasts. And basically, uh, East Coast, West Coast, things are going to be a lot more expensive. And Portland, I'm afraid, uh, where I'm today, is a lot less affordable than it was, say, five years ago. And it's only going to get less affordable. Now, a lot of people talk about rent controls. Uh, they talk about affordable housing. 
But let me tell you my thought about that. I don't think any of those are going to make any difference. Uh, I think what's going to happen is those places, uh, the places that are less affordable, um, are going to just decrease as affor in affordability. Things like rent controls and affordable housing, they're all well-meaning attempts at trying to make it livable for people that actually live there and get the work done. For instance, school teachers, uh, policemen, um, fire workers, firemen and women, uh, people that are nurses and uh, physicians. Well, not so much physicians. They usually are on the high end of the pay scale. But say uh, nurses and other help like that, uh, help for the elderly, uh, service workers, of course, uh, in restaurants and so on. Places uh, are not going to be affordable, I'm afraid. And affordable housing only benefits a few of the lucky people that make as little money as they can uh, or as they do to qualify for affordable housing. And then what happens is then they have to usually enter a lottery and win the lottery. So that's an issue. And so what's going to happen is that um, the affordability, affordable housing really doesn't work. In fact, if you want to look at it from a pure economic standpoint, it takes those housing stocks uh, off of the market. And because there's less housing available, then that drives up the price. And some people actually say, well, it decreases or it increases inequality because then you have more people at the low end and more people at the high end who are affording the, uh, who are able to afford the higher end places. So, and then you have rent control and rent control is also an issue where you, it only works for a certain small percentage of the people. So I think the places where people want to live, if they want to live there, places like Portland now, it's been discovered, uh, they're going to drive up the prices and uh, it's going to happen <clears throat> sooner or later. And it's, it's sort of an inexorable economic force where people want to live, supply and demand, they are going to drive up the price. Now here in Portland, what they're doing is kind of interesting. They say, we're going to increase density. Um, we're going to build up. Uh, we're going to have a, a small apartment buildings. Uh, we're going to infill in neighborhoods. Um, the only problem with that is you might lose the character of the entire city. In other words, the city might become much more dense and Portland loses a lot of what it has. And this, I'm just using Portland as an example uh, because this same is playing out with many other places around. Uh, looking around LA, uh, I can see signs around where people are saying, stop the McMansions. And what's happening is a lot of places, a lot of smaller bungalows are being torn down, uh, sold for say six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars And in its place is a $2 million structure. Um, and the smaller place was perfectly fine, but they want to tear it down so they can get more money for the larger building. Um, I see that happening all over. When we took a big road trip last year, all around the country, uh, concentrating on the deep south, we were gone for about um, uh, nearly a month and 10,000 miles. And what we saw was uh, the same thing happening around in many other cities. Lots of infill, lots of building, lots of building larger homes that are less affordable, in fact, decreasing the affordability. And the people who are living in those towns and cities are very upset because it makes uh, it's ruining the character of their place. So I don't know way around it. Uh, I wish I thought that there was something that was that could stop that. Um, but I think it's sort of a force, as I said, in an inexorable, unstoppable economic force where people want to live. They're going to build up the price and hopefully they won't tear down too many of the existing stock because then that really takes away from the charm of the place. Um, so we'll see what happens with that.
Um, I'm going to go ahead. I got some questions here from uh, some of our uh, users out there of bestplaces.net. For instance, I got one from Shelly, uh, who is in San Diego, and she said that her partner and I would prefer to remain living out west. And what she means by that is everything from Colorado out to the west uh, to the coast. So they're looking for a locale with four seasons and uh, preferably a mild four seasons and sunshine because they're both active outdoor enthusiasts, uh, a place with charm, coffee houses, wine bars, bookstores, variety of architecture and overall affordability. Um, and Shelley says quite wisely, a state that does not have income tax is not necessarily the most affordable state in general. Very, very smart. Uh, depends on your particular situation. Uh, what's best for you for your tax situation. So a lot of these things that you see, the studies out there like Kiplinger comes out and says, oh, the worst place to live for to retire is California and New York because they're very expensive. Well, maybe not. Depends on where you live in that state. Depends on your own tax situation. And you shouldn't base your whole retirement um, your whole retirement uh, strategy just based on taxes. There's a lot more to life than just taxes, hopefully. So, um, Shelly, uh, boy, that what you have sounds like a uh, that's a <laughs> that uh, sounds like a, a heavenly place that you're looking for, uh, with all of the different uh, you're looking for four seasons and sunshine and and a place with charm and affordability. Tough to find because uh, everybody else is looking for places like that. But stay away from the coasts. Um, so the closer you get to the coast, the higher and more expensive things are. That said, um, oh, and stay away from the major, major metro areas. The further out that you go from the major metros, the more affordable it's going to be. Uh, some places I know, uh, Boise has been really uh, interesting. Uh, we stopped in there recently, and they have a really neat downtown scene going on. Um, basically. What we found is in every city you go to, there's always some sort of, well, I guess you could call it a hipster component, uh, but uh, where there are good coffee shops, there are young people. Um, it's funny, I'm looking around for uh, 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 when my wife Gretchen and I were driving around the deep south, we were looking for signs of, uh, of, of hipster uh, development where people were uh, young people were going around with uh, facial hair and uh, well the, the men of course with facial hair and then the uh, um, funky um, funky glasses and the the coolest glasses these days are not black horn rim glasses but they're the white uh, so they have white horn rims uh, so they might have like um, tight Levi's and um, skinny jeans and um, expensive strollers. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, yeah, those are, and, and a cool coffee shop around and foreign cars parked around. There, there might be things like a Fiat, a Prius, um, BMW, interesting cars like that. So those, uh, that's, that's a pretty good sign of a, of a hipster neighborhood. And you'll find those in almost any place now. Uh, it's almost, uh, and there'll be a neighborhood of folks like-minded folks like that. So a lot of times in places, if, if the town is large enough, you can find a place for you in that neighborhood. You can find at your own sort of community within that place. But Boise is doing, um, I think, a great job. In fact, it might be, I don't know if it's jumped the shark, as they say, uh, whether it's gotten too expensive or overdeveloped. I don't think so yet. I think it's still really good. Um, check out Walla Walla and Spokane, Washington. Uh, those are two places that are really doing well, and Walla Walla uh, has a great uh, sort of wine vineyard scene, um, and it's got some really nice restaurants, um, and the climate, I don't know if you would really say four seasons anywhere here in the northwest, anywhere in the west coast, I don't know, we don't have the four seasons like they do back in, um, say, uh, the east, Minnesota, Maine, Connecticut, New Hampshire, you're not going to have four seasons like that, but it is. Uh, you are going to have cooler times of the year. Um, also, say like on the, you might want to take a look at the places 
in terms of affordability, the places that are sort of more depressed, and if you look at a place with a that is maybe having some issues uh, as far as success, economic success, um, those are going to be more affordable because people are not going to be able to afford more expensive houses and they're not going to move there because of the jobs. So places maybe like the Oregon coast um, and Northern California, if you get away from uh, beyond San Francisco, um, so like Mendocino County, uh, those places. So you might take a look at those, but um, good question. I appreciate it. Let's see what else we have. Uh, let's take, um, and Richard uh, has a question online here. Let's get, is it, is it possible to find a walkable community that's affordable? I want to sell the car, walk to the grocery store, the library, public transit can take me to the theater and the doctor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Richard, what you want to do is these affordable communities, uh, neighborhoods, are going to go up in price. What you want to do is try and get in on the ground floor. And that means um, maybe have a little, maybe sort of take a chance on it. Uh, but you can pretty well spot what they are and you can find out where they are in a, in a, in a place, maybe a good three years before maybe the, the, the market catches up with it. For instance, here in Portland, there's a place called the Alberta Arts um, uh, yeah, our Alberta Arts Community, I think something like that. But basically, it's Alberta Street. And here's what I found out about these places. Basically, these are places, as I said, everything seems to depend on economics. And what happens is these are places that are kind of cheap and they're run down. Um, and they have really inexpensive uh, storefront for different communities are not communities, but different individuals to, to start some interesting business. There might be hemp clothing, uh, interesting coffee shop. Someone opens a vegan restaurant. Someone opens a vegan Spanish restaurant. Uh, someone is going to get into some sort of, um, I don't know, community, uh, community sustainable um, uh, agriculture, uh, that sort of thing. There are going to be some interesting shops going in uh, because young people, usually young people, not always, can afford to take a chance. It doesn't take much to get in. It doesn't take much to sustain it and find a little revenue to keep their project going. And what happens is these cheap little places, these strips that are kind of weird and quirky, um, they often develop a following. This might take this might take five, 10 years or even longer, but the secret is the cheap rents. So people will find that, they'll cluster together and they will create something interesting and walkable. Now the problem in finding a, uh, an affordable walkable community, that's one that's already built up, people have discovered it and prices have gone up and there goes your affordability. And frankly, a lot of the interest does too. For instance, here in Portland, we have a really cool area called the Pearl District. And the Pearl District used to be sort of, um, they used to have a Blitz Weinhardt Brewery. Uh, they used to have a lot of factory places um, and everything like that. So it used to be this community, uh, or it used to be sort of an industrial space. And then they started revitalizing it and putting in some condos. Well, it soon happened that it, um, people discovered it and it was fun and it was like a little bit of sort of a New York City kind of loft living right in the middle of Portland which was not a particularly cool place uh, in regards to that so people um, wanted to live there and it made it more interesting but then what happened was it became a lot more developed and to my mind a lot less interesting in other words think of this as sort of like Imagine you're going to choose between going to a coffee shop, one is a Starbucks, and the other is some odd little place where someone is roasting their own beans and they have something new they want you to try and uh, that sort of thing. So Pearl, uh, the Pearl District in Portland used to have these individual places, but now it's all sort of star Starbucks and um, a lot more 
chain stores, corporate like P.F. Chang's. They don't have the cool Asian restaurants like in another part, part of Portland uh, run by the immigrant population. You know, the newly arrived folks from say Vietnam or whatever that are having their own restaurant. No, it's P.F. Chang's, which is a chain out of Austin, Texas. To me, that's not as interesting as all these other funky places uh, and certainly not as authentic. So what happens is as the affordability goes away, I think a lot of the interest goes away too uh, because people want sort of a, a safer, more Disneyland kind of experience. So. If you can do your homework and look for the place where things are happening, uh, you could buy in early. In fact, in five years, 10 years, stand to really come out well on your investment as well as being affordable right now. So let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, someone, Marie says, I have a question I wanted to know about Beaverton, Oregon, prices, bus service, weather, et cetera. Uh, that's a good question. You know, I have a, another question I got was uh, people have gone ahead and said, uh, for instance, they would like to know things like the uh, number of flights, uh, the, uh, the price of um, garbage service, homeowners insurance rates, water rates, gas and sewer, um, trash collection. This is Sandy in Sacramento that has these sort of questions. This is really good. There are a lot of things that add to the cost of living somewhere that are really, really difficult to get because what we need to pass this information to you is some organization that collects this, like the federal government or, or someone that um, has this information, collects it in some way, so we can cover the entire United States and pass it on to you. And a lot of the stuff like water rates um, is not uh, available. And it is generally, I think, but uh, not at the level of detail that does you much good. We are gonna be coming out with some information on auto insurance rates. And there is a lot of, um, a lot of uh, diversity, a lot of differences around the country based on that. And uh, for instance, Michigan, for whatever reason, I think maybe it's Louisiana also have crazy high insurance rates, has something to do with the structure uh, of the insurance there. But we'll be coming out with information on that. So keep an eye on our site. Uh, we'll pass that along to you. Let's see, um, and things like bus service, but things like um, they wanted to know about uh, weather. Well, our site, bestplaces.net, great place to check for uh, weather and that sort of thing. We're going to be coming out with something new called a climate index as well. I like the idea of indices because what you're able to do with an index is find out very quickly uh, what something is. For instance, is this have good summer weather or good winter weather? You want to know that without having to evaluate all the temperature and the humidity and the rainfall and everything like that. We'll re we'll, we will reduce it down to one number that you can take a look at and get a pretty good idea whether or not it's comfortable for you. Um, let's see what else we have here as far as comments. Let's see. Um, so Al uh, writes, and he lives in Park Ridge, Illinois, and but he's also lived in Belmont Shore, California in the late 60s. Can I afford to move back to SoCal? Well, maybe you can, Al. But let's go ahead and look at that a little bit uh, further. Is there any beach town that I can live in at a reasonable price? A home for $400,000 with some green space. Wow, that is a tough, tough order. Uh, basically, I would say that you're going to have to move, um, as I said, further away from the metro area because there are people, metro areas are going to, going to be where people make their money. And if they have money, they're going to compete with you. Uh, on what they can afford to pay. So if you can get away from the metro area, if you uh, work by, say, telecommuting, have your own business, or retired, then you cannot get in the game of competing with everyone within the metro area. You can move away from it and find some places that are affordable. But $400,000, uh, that's pretty tough, a home for that. 
for instance, I was just checking Belmont Shore. I think it's eight to nine hundred thousand dollars. It's in Long Beach, and um, it's going to be pretty unaffordable, I'm afraid, at this point, at least at, at the four hundred thousand dollar range. So uh, I would say, um, in fact, anything along there, you know, like Carlsbad, uh, along the beach, that's all prime area, uh, and it, people are certainly um, fighting for that and fighting to afford it. So I would say start heading north if you're looking California along the beach, uh, along the coast, might have to go all the way up north past San Francisco. And like I said, the further you get away from any sort of metro area, um, the better chance you have of that. But check out on our website, we're going to have some new maps that are going to help you look for the most affordable places. Uh, and you don't have to look at specific values. You can look at the map and see where the, um, the housing prices all are. So check on that in about a week or two out. Um, let's see. What else? Well, this will be interesting. Bruce, I don't have an answer for you, but Bruce has sent a link to a Dropbox where he's done some analysis. He and his wife have um, been living in their RV for over a year and have been traveling all over the country looking for some places. Uh, and they want to uh, live near the water um, in Florida or South Carolina and have narrowed it down and they'd like me to take a look at it and see what I can do to give them some suggestions. Be happy to do that. Looking forward to doing it. I haven't had time to do that yet, Bruce, but uh, I think there might be something here to also to share uh, with uh, the other listeners to this podcast. So next time we get to that and uh, look forward to um, uh, answering your question. Um, we got this one email uh, when we asked for people to write in um, comments. Andrew writes in from Kazakhstan who says, it's total corruption, danger to human life. I fear for the lives of my family and children. Um, please help. Wow, that certainly puts things into context that we have things pretty fortunate here in the United States for the most part. Yes, we do have there's poverty and there's inequality here in the U.S., but thank, thankfully, it, there are lots of places that are, uh, well, we're much better than a lot of other places, put it that way. And I hope, I hope that Andrew is able to get out of Kazakhstan and find a place that um, welcomes him and his family and um, finds some peace and some uh, quality of life that uh, every, everybody deserves. Um, Carl writes from, um, from Chicago where he is, can't see himself living in Chicago anymore. Uh, basically that it is, uh, seven to eight months of pretty awful, uh, weather, the crime, uh, the debt situation with the state is, uh, making problems with the services that they provide. He would really like to get somewhere um, better. Um, he would like to go ahead and find some place a little bit more conservative with good weather most of the year. He likes Arizona, but he doesn't manage if he can the 100 plus degrees during the summer near Phoenix. Um, so Carl, here's my thoughts. Um, first of all, like I said, stay away from the major uh, metro areas. Well, I, I certainly I certainly uh, see what you mean by Arizona. I don't think I could go ahead and live with that. I think maybe further north. So I would look at um, places that are doing well. Like I said, Boise, uh, check out Montana. Um, Utah is really doing extremely well as far as quality of life aspects. Um, people there enjoy good health through good um, uh, basically people take care of themselves. They have a good healthcare system. And this, you know, this points out something interesting. For instance, I said, Utah has, um, the people there enjoy good health. What happens is when you move to a place, for instance, you're still you wherever you go, can't get away from that for better or for worse. So if I move to a place that has 
where people are really healthy, a lot of their habits are going to run up, rub off on me. And even though I'm the same person, uh, but if you think about it, if you go to visit some friends, if you go to a potluck, if people in the office are bringing food, are they going to bring maybe some healthier muffins or are they going to bring a whole giant box of donuts? Are they, um, are people, it's a very subtle kind of thing, but you're impacted by the people around you. So if people around you have a healthier lifestyle, if they say don't smoke, you won't perhaps be as tempted to smoke uh, either. Uh, if they, if the people prone towards overweight, you'll, um, you'll probably feel like, hey, I put on 10 pounds, hey, I fit right in. But if everyone else is more fit, if they're doing, uh, if they're gonna walk somewhere instead of take the car, if they live in a place that's, um, uh, say, more walkable, uh, then what's going to happen is those habits are going to run up, rub off on you. So that really helps a lot to look at the health of a place and realize it's going to help you maintain a healthy lifestyle and you know acquire a healthy lifestyle as well. So what I would say, uh, Carl, is... Um, probably stay away from uh, Washington, Oregon, California, unless there are specific places that are maybe away from the metro areas. But if you want to live in a metro area uh, or near one, and I love the idea myself of living near a major metro area because of all the amenities, the uh, interesting stores, the shopping, um, living in the middle of a very small community that is pretty isolated has a lot of issues with it. And um, when I say issues, challenges, I guess, as far as like things to do, uh, interesting events, uh, amenities, and of course, you're usually not near a major airport. A major air airport can be pretty important as well. We have uh, a rating on our website, bestplaces.net, that uh, shows you, I believe, airports and um, whether or not different places are near them. So that's a valuable, uh, a valuable thing to have. So anyway, uh, good luck, uh, Carl, getting out of Chicago, if that's what you want to do, and um, uh, finding a place that's better. But uh, I would say definitely look at sort of the, uh, the places. And you said something more conservative. I think that living with people that are like-minded, I think, is a good thing, because no one wants to be always contentious with your neighbors. So I think that's an important part of one's quality of life. And so let's see what we have here on our chat. Thanks, thanks for going ahead and writing on the chat, folks. Um, is the future water supply in Arizona a concern for retirees? Well, I'm going to go ahead and just mention this because I'm getting on in years myself. Uh, you know, getting pretty gray there. Um, generally speaking, I don't think it's going to be a problem in the next 10 years, 20 years, maybe. Uh, but heck, you know, they are going ahead and having issues in California right now with the water supply. So what's going to happen, I think, um, yeah, there will be problems. There will be issues. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's sustainable in the face of global warming and maybe just overall. Um, those green lawns in Arizona will probably have to give away to gravel uh, and um, you know, sort of a rock garden, uh, desert kind of garden, which I think are beautiful uh, with the agave plants and the cacti and that sort of thing. Uh, I think that's absolutely lovely. But um, green lawns, maybe not so much. And it's going to be, I think, a challenge to maintain all the needs of all those people without some major re-engineering going on. So will it affect retirees? No, I would say not because let's face it, um, we'll probably, um, it's probably not gonna be in our lifetime, I'll put it that way. Um, and someone writes, uh, David says, what about the affordability of single family homes in Sacramento. Well, Sacramento is, is 
is going up like much of California as far as uh, home prices. It's not, uh, I haven't seen it way up on the list of, of places. It's gonna be more stable because there's a large population of um, government workers, state workers, because it's the state capital. Now, what I've found is places that are really nice and um, stable. Um, and I think that this is really important is um, places that are stable. I like stable places because what happens is places that have a huge boom, they also have a huge bust going the other way. And this, from everything I've seen and analyzed, this is unavoidable. Every time you have a boom, it's gonna swing back and you're gonna bust. And the bigger the boom, the bigger the bust. So that's not a good thing because what it does is it completely upends the entire community. For instance, look at the places in um, uh, North Dakota and other places that have enjoyed the benefits of what they call the extraction industries like oil and gas, uh, the um, fracking that's going on, uh, looking for the, uh, the oil sands uh, in, the, in the northern part of the country. That has been incredible disruption where the town and the income has grown wildly in just a few years. And now the tables have turned. Um, there's an oversupply of oil that cut down on the drilling and as a result, now it's whipsawing to the other way where all these, uh, this huge infrastructure that was built up is now everyone's leaving. And it's tough, it's really tough. So I would say find a stable place. Getting back to Sacramento, the places that are stable are places with a state government like city ca uh, state capitals um, and places that have colleges. For instance, colleges, even in boom times, and bus times, they're gonna be pretty stable. So um, affordability in Sacramento, yeah, some places are gonna be crazy unaffordable because it's California, but if you look around, there will be some places that are more so if you're willing to go ahead and take a chance, like I said, on those places uh, that um, maybe are in the neighborhoods which are not recognized currently as being as good as they are, but you can help make them great and watch your investment go up as well. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, so Richard says that the wife and I have, uh, traveled to Prescott, Arizona to see what it's like to live there during retirement. Is it, there a good website to find out what it's like for people living in place? There are good ones on the web, uh, where people have their comments. Um, sometimes real estate places, uh, real estate agents and, uh, real estate firms when they're not trying to sell something too much. If they realize the best way to market is to provide a service, and that is information. Uh, what you might want to do is talk to some real estate agents and see if they have um, some resources they could point you to specifically. We're going to have uh, more comments on our site uh, from people living in the different areas. But uh, Prescott uh, has always been uh, on our short list of places, um, being higher in the mountains away from uh, uh, Phoenix. It's only about an hour, hour and a half from Phoenix, but it's much higher in the mountains. And as a result, it's not as hot. It's uh, part of a high desert. And uh, there, it, it often drops below freezing, but that's at night where you don't notice it as much and it provides some welcome cooling. So it's a high desert climate. Um, and I'm afraid about 10 years ago, it sort of got um, discovered maybe 15 years ago as, a, as one, of a, a, one of the more affordable retirement spots. So prices have been going up, but I still think it's a winner. Um, let's see, I see we have some new questions coming in via email. Let me go ahead and check my email box. So it's great that you could be here. I'm really happy to hear from, well, I'm really happy to hear from the folks that are writing in uh, with uh, different questions. In fact, if you don't uh, uh, want to write in right now, or you can go ahead and go on our site and share your thoughts with everybody, and this is really valuable, is you can share your thoughts. Everybody could get benefit of, uh, of what you found. In fact, sure, I know 
lots and lots about all these different places in the US. But I don't know as much as you do about where you live. I'd love to hear about where you live. I'd love to hear about what you like about it and what you don't like. And um, please share your thoughts on our website. Uh, there are places where you can make comments about it. I'd love to hear it. I try to read all of them. And uh, it really, I get as much from you folks, hopefully, as you get from me sharing some general ideas. The specifics that you provide are so valuable to what I learn and can share with other people. So let's go ahead and see what else we've got. Um, town hall question. Uh, someone, uh, Elizabeth uh, from Grays Lake, Illinois, writes in, and she is a migraine sufferer who does not well, do well with hot summer weather. Heat and humidity are triggers. However, I do love sun and the frequent gray, uh, gray skies, rain, and, and cloud. Oh, but that she finds the gray skies, rain, and clouds are depressing. So what you want is a place that's cooler but lots of sun. So I would say... Um, Heat and humidity or triggers, I would say maybe like a high desert, Pacific Northwest, like I mentioned about Spokane, Walla Walla. I think that pretty well fills your needs right there. Um, because they have, and uh, Bend, Oregon. Bend uh, is another place. It's on the other side of the, um, of the Cascades, and it's going to be a lot drier and sunnier. So uh, I would say start with Bend. I think Ben's a great place. It's it's going to be dry. You can also look at Ashland, Oregon, is a great place for retirees. Home of the Oregon Shakespearean Festival, uh, has some great cultural events. Um, but those places, uh, Roseburg is another one. Grants Pass, uh, not going to be as interesting as Ashland, but of course, hey, you're going to pay more more money for Ashland. Bend is growing quickly. Uh, Spokane, Walla Walla, those places, and Boise are all going to be interesting. Also, um, I would say uh, Utah, uh, the Salt Lake City Basin, but it does have some pollution issues. So we did a study on migraines. Um, if you go to our website, uh, you'll probably find some high, uh, we did an, a look at the places that are most likely to cause issues with migraines, migraine hotspots, we call them. And uh, we did it with, I think, Ortho McNeil, one of the drug companies, um, and has a lots of useful information. It's on our website. Uh, you can go there and look at the study. Maybe that will give you some tips as well. So let's see what else we have. Let's see. No, that was Elizabeth. And, um, excuse me. Let's see. There are people have. Uh, compliments and comments about our website. Really appreciate that. Um, people are not particularly happy about the weather in Texas. You know, we took our trip, and this is, uh, I can't believe how lucky we were. We took our trip last year, I think it was end of March and uh, through April, uh, all around the U.S. We went through and we managed to miss all of the uh, tornadoes, hurricanes. Uh, well, there were no hurricanes at that point, but there was uh, some severe flooding in South Carolina. Uh, we managed to miss everything. There was, we had half a day of a light rain that fell in as we were leaving Tulsa, Oklahoma. Other than that, every day was perfect and pleasant. Uh, and uh, even the Gulf Coast was not muggy at all it was just very very pleasantly warm so i can't believe how lucky we are but the problem someone says they don't like the weather in texas yeah well texas weather uh can be brutal in fact some of the most sort of hazardous from the point of natural disasters 
probably focuses around the Dallas area. When you look at the combination of uh, flooding, rains, tornadoes, um, those sorts of things, Texas, I would say, might be the most challenging place. But it does have some pretty good affordability. Um, let's see, and Don uh, has some questions in there. Don is looking for, uh, she's looking at, uh, she's looking for someplace south. Um, I don't really, Don, uh, you're looking for someplace south. There are lots of great places to live down south and they're very affordable as well. Unfortunately, without much more information, what your specifics are, I can't go ahead and give you any uh, more focused recommendations. But if you happen to, uh, to uh, do that, I'd be happy to go ahead and uh, uh, look at your situation some more. Terry writes in and says, hey, we're looking to retire in a city greater than a million people. Uh, so when you look at a city, it's not just the city that you're looking at, it's the metro area. Uh, so you can look at the metro areas, for instance, um, a place like Portland here, the city is 600,000, but the metro area is 2 million. Um, and it has all those resources. And there are lots of great places to live around it. Don't have to live within the city, pay the higher price. You can live within the metro area and still have a, a, good, a good quality of life and enjoy all of those amenities. So where a retired couple can have a condo with adequate public transit and decent safety, pre-tax income, of about sixty thousand dollars. Any ideas? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and see about that. Um, city of a million people. Um, well, what you're going to have usually is you're going to have good public transit, uh, and that's really a benefit. When you live in a place that has a larger population, there's only about, I think there are only about thirty-five, forty metro areas that have a million, maybe 50, maybe it's 50 when you look at metro areas. It's about a 50 places in the U.S. with a metro, a metro areas with a population of a million plus. Um, and that's going to pretty much um, reduce your search, which is good because a search can be overwhelming. Looking at that with $60,000 of pre-tax income, I don't know if you are going to be buying or renting but you'll want some place that's going to be more affordable. Stay away from the coasts. I would say, and I'm seeing this, this is an important thing. I'm, I'm glad, Terry, you brought up your, um, your question because I'm seeing something. I'm, I'm feeling something, looking at the different news stories out there, talking to people. I think that larger cities are just becoming too darn unaffordable. People are now opening up to the idea of moving to different places, say in the Midwest, uh, say uh, like Indianapolis, um, Omaha, places, Des Moines, places like that that are great places to live. Sure, they aren't cool like San Francisco or New York or even Chicago. They aren't cool like that, but they're eminently livable. They have so much in the way of quality of, of life to offer and they also have affordability. Let's face it, if you are skating on the razor's edge, trying to make things work affordably in your career or what you do, um, that's not a good way to live. It's not fun and it's just not healthy. It's a lot of stress involved. So what people are doing is they're saying, hey, I can move to a place like, um, well, even Cleveland, uh, which is not always, it's a, it's a gritty place in, in, in a lot of ways, and it has a lot of challenges, but it's eminently affordable. You can get in, in there and help make the city great through your participation uh, and what you do, and you're gonna have someplace affordable, and it has a great infrastructure. So many of these older cities that are overlooked have a great infrastructure that make it really livable. And places like uh, Iowa, the places are really, uh, the people are really healthy there. They have some of the longest life expectancies in the U.S. And hopefully that will rub off on us if we choose to move there. And uh, we can enjoy that quality of life too. Um, 
so let's see. Uh, Dan says, you mentioned the Northwest. It's a wonderful area except for the fire danger and revol resulting smoke-filled air. Yeah. Um, forest fires and that sort of thing are an issue. Uh, I don't know how common that's going to be. I'd like to think that uh, it is uh, a rarity. Uh, we weren't troubled where we were here in Oregon uh, as much, at least you know my corner of it. Uh, so I would say every place is going to have its downside. And that's one thing I'd like to tell everyone. If you look online, look at people's reviews, there's so many that talk about the problems where they live. And that's only... I think that's just reality. We're all going to be able to find problems with uh, where we live. Just go ahead and take those with a grain of salt and realize that those are maybe issues that people are having, but doesn't necessarily make it unfit for you to live there. Uh, and you just have to factor that in with all the other maybe positive aspects that that place has to offer. So we're coming up on one o'clock. Uh, Vince has a question. Oh, Richard goes ahead and says, Pittsburgh. I, Pittsburgh is a great place to live. I'm glad, glad Richard mentioned Pittsburgh. Uh, I really like Pittsburgh. It's a city that has come back from so many uh, problems. It has lost half of its population over the last 100 years. It used to be one of the largest, most vibrant cities in the U.S. Fell on some hard times as the industry uh, the steel industry shifted away from it, but they have rebuilt themselves, tremendous infrastructure. It's a great place to live. Uh, so definitely think about Pittsburgh as something affordable. So um, someone says, how about Florida? Uh, hey, I like Sarasota. It's very cool. On the Keys, uh, uh, Bertrand, uh, one of our, our um, folks here at Best Places, just spent some time uh, knocking around the keys, doing a little investigation. He thought uh, Marathon was a very cool place. Uh, so you get a lot of that um, beautiful Florida Key living without fighting the folks and the prices in Key West. Um, but uh, like I said, Sarasota is very cool. Um, Florida has a lot to go for it, especially because housing prices are recovering. But it's the top of the hour. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you tuning in and listening. Uh, bestplaces.net. If you've got something to say about where you live, I'd love to hear about it. Shoot me an email or better yet, put it in a comment so that everybody can learn what you have to say. Um, thanks very much and look forward uh, to doing this again next month. And uh, keep an eye on our website so you can give us some questions. And I can do a little research and I can try and answer those and everybody can learn uh, from your particular questions. Thanks a lot. This is Bert Sperling uh, with Best Places and uh, Sperling's Best Places at bestplaces.net. Thanks very much for attending.